Is GDP or GNP the best measure of economic growth? Neither, really. Sure you could use GNP if you want the basis to be nationals of a country, what they earn and spend regardless of where they live, or GDP if you're interested in the geography basis, how much is earned and spent in a geographical area, regardless of who does it. But realize, these things only became bound up with economic growth in the last century. GDP and GNP are not measures of the standard of living. In fact there are no standardized measures of the standard of living, but you knew that. That's because of subjectivity in the definitions. You apparently have your own idea about what economic growth means, but you have not defined it in your question, so I refuse to accept the traditional definition, and I refuse to assume it for you, and instead, I shall write off the top of my head what economy might refer to, and what growth might entail. I can only assume that you are not an alien being from outer space. But if you are a human representative I would have to control for near infinite heterogeneity of preferences, and I'm not up for that. Make your own model to include a real economy. Make an index of how well off the individual is. The sign plus means higher, the sign means lower. That is, economy has something to do with prices that you pay, and if prices are high, that's a negative on your economy, right? So, how high prices are, what the possibility of getting a reasonable place to live for less than an arm and a leg, plus the cost of non-food essentials, your and your kids' access to a good education for at least 14 years plus, consider your distance to a hospital, see if you can get a good paying job plus, make a statement about your opportunities plus, your overall happiness plus the number of choices that do not come with a heavy cost of competition with others in the market. Evaluate your own work-life balance and determine whether you could do better, plus. Determine whether you have good friends that you can vent to, plus do you have recreational and fun things to do, plus and finally do this with data, but use simple data, right at hand. Don't substitute large parameters unemployment, taxation, the money supply, prices, interest rates, Wall Street closing indexes, housing starts, etc. For your economic growth index stay in your house or at most go down your street and record the data use both quantitative and qualitative data that you know intimately that you know is not error prone and be honest with yourself when it comes to rating your experiences no economist could come across more excellent data than yours private and confidential even if he stole it himself from cambridge analytica or adult friend finder anthem or ebay or equifax which are just a few of the firms that allowed cataclysmic data breaches of personally identifiable information, or gave it willy-nilly to third parties. When the public is stupid enough to offer up PE, advertisers have a field day. Do yourself a favor and destroy the apps you do not actually usually use. This index construction could be the first step in financial independence, at least the first step in your ongoing separation from the evils of neoclassical economics, or supply-side expectations. Then summarize your index for yourself only. Sure and you can compare your index with any other index out there and I promise that your index will be more accurate and more precise for you which is all that is important, than any silly macro growth index you might see on a newscast. Ask yourself when was the last time you actually saw the effects of a new high on Wall Street as it affected Main Street. And you'll forever thank me that you won't have to repeat the silly lies that they tell you in Econ 101, namely, what's right for the average is relevant to you. And you'll start scoffing at people that tell you gross prevarications like, the national unemployment rate and Wall Street are two main components of the US economy. It's amazing what happens when questioning authority and thinking for yourself become habits. Gross domestic product GDP, is the best estimate of the total economic output produced within a country's borders. The gross national product is the total output of all the resources owned by all the citizens of a country, regardless of where it's produced. So GNP equals GDP plus the output of foreign assets owned by citizens domiciled in the country. GDP is most useful as a measure of development because there are great difficulties estimating the output of the foreign assets held by all of a nation's citizens. During the last half century the very rich and their lawyers have practiced the concealment of their foreign assets on a gigantic scale, to avoid taxes on their foreign income and particularly to avoid death duties. 
The United Kingdom, in its residual empire of islands, is running the largest tax avoidance system in the world, and it has become impossible to say who owns a vast amount of foreign assets. There are two principal procedures for the anonymizing of ownership. The first is the nominee shareholding. Billionaires can move part of their assets abroad and into the name of a real person, John Smith Account 23, with the help of foreign lawyers and the consent of that individual, who becomes a nominee for these funds or assets, and whatever output they produce. To say that you cannot identify these assets as part of the GNP of the country where that individual resides is to understate the issue. These funds and assets can become stateless assets, because nobody knows, except the lawyers and individuals beneficially involved, including the nominee, who owns what anymore. The second procedure is to set up a dummy company or foreign bank accounts owned by a numbered but no person identified as the beneficial owner bank account. I believe that this second method is becoming more popular among the very rich because of the moves taken by Obama and the EU to outlaw nominee bank accounts.